G'day, I'm Paul Parlane, Director of Instruction at Mountain Gate Country Club, Los Angeles, California. Common advice I hear from these shots I've just heard here, you swung too fast, you come over the top, your clubs are too stiff, perhaps you should take two months off and quit. As a great Ben Hogan said in Power Golf, when you grip a golf club to strike a ball, every natural instinct you have to strike that ball is wrong. What I am here today to talk about is the importance of the connection of your hands to the golf club and the grip. Your hands have the main influence over the club face angle, your ability to create leverage in the swing and in turn generate power through the golf ball. Now that's not to say if your club face is too open or too closed that you can't hit the ball. If your club face is too open, your body will make compensating moves to try and square it up. If your club face is too closed, your body will make compensating moves to try and square it up. If your club face is neutral, your body will naturally allow you to, to square the golf club up at impact and through impact. <clears throat> there are many ways to swing a golf club. One plane swing, two plane swing, gravity golf, stack and tilt. I'm not here today to discuss the effectiveness of these techniques. What I am here today to discuss is the fact that all of these techniques require that you take hold of the golf club and have an effective grip. You've seen many pros use different grips to hit the ball, too weak and too strong. However, they're the greatest athletes in the world. They hit thousands and thousands of balls. What I'm here to show you today is how to be consistent, how to be able to keep checking your swing to stay consistent. Let's start with your left hand. Your left hand, I liken to the engine of a car. Your left hand is your main holding hand. This determines the leverage your swing can create and the hold that the hold and the support you can create on the golf club. Now when we place our left hand on the club, we don't want to place the we don't want to place the left hand too much into the palm of the hand or too much into the fingers of the hand. On my left hand here, I've drawn a line from this crease in my hand which is called the heart line. I want the club to run in a diagonal from this heart line across to the first pad of my forefinger. From that position there, I want to fold the heel of my hand on top of the golf club and then close my fingers. What I don't want to do is get my club here, close my fingers first, and then try and fold the pad on top. It is essential that we fold the pad of your hand on top of the club first, and then close the fingers. Common mistakes I see with the left hand grip. Holding the club too much in the palm of the hand. This doesn't allow the heel of my hand to be positioned on top of the club enough. Other common mistakes. Holding the club too low in the fingers. This now bunches up my hand a lot and causes my left wrist to fold too far on top of the golf club causing a strong grip. So again, I want to position the side of my hand, the, the heart line to the first pad of my forefinger into the side of the grip, fold the heel of my hand on top of the golf club and then close my fingers around the club. To enable that you get a secure hold on top of the golf club, your entire wrist here should sit on top of the golf club. This enables you to be able to hinge your hand up and down with ease without losing the secureness to your grip. Your left thumb should be placed towards the middle of the golf club. Now there are debates on whether your thumb should be short or should be long. I like to see the heart line into the side of the club to the first pad and the thumb just to naturally sit down the golf club with a tiny space here between your fourth between your forefinger and thumb. If the thumb gets too short and too bunched up here, it tends to cause the club to right up into the palm of the hand. If the thumb gets too long down here, it tends to cause the club to get too low in the fingers. So I like the thumb to be sitting somewhere in between, comfortably down the middle of the club, but with no pressure. No pressure on that left thumb at all. That should be as relaxed as you can have it. A great left hand grip check that I like to do 
is to sit your hand down beside your body here, take off your thumb and forefinger and just bounce the club just gently up and down. This enables you to feel the weight of the club under your heel pad and enable you to feel how the last three fingers securely take hold of the golf club and support the club. You fold your left hand over on top of the club enough so that from your address position you can see two knuckles, two to three knuckles. Two knuckles is a perfectly neutral grip. Three knuckles is slightly strong. My advice would be to have a neutral to slightly strong grip. Your right hand or bottom hand acts like a throwing mechanism. Your right hand in the golf swing is a very powerful tool for being able to deliver the club through the ball with speed. If I hold my right hand up here, you'll notice with my thumb sitting beside my forefinger, I have a muscle here and a muscle here and a groove in between those two muscles. That was cleverly designed for golf. If I lift my left hand up like so, you will see that muscle, that groove in between these two muscles naturally fits into the side of my left hand and covers my left hand at address. Okay, so your right hand now can sit into the side of your left hand and snugly fit into the side like so. The trigger finger and thumb on top of your hand is critical for being able to deliver powerful shots through the ball. Your right forefinger is called the trigger finger. Much like if you were to squeeze a water pistol, you would use your finger in this position. Position the pad of your trigger finger into the side of the golf club like so. Position your for your excuse me, position your right your right thumb into the side of your trigger finger forming a very close V here between your thumb and forefinger. We don't want to see big gaps here and we don't want to see the hand position underneath. We want to get the trigger finger and thumb as close together as we can so that as we swing a golf club this trigger finger and thumb act like a throwing mechanism. It's like if I was to pick up a ball to throw it I'm naturally going to hold my trigger finger and thumb on the ball like so and I would then use my hand as a throwing mechanism. If I held on to a ball with my forefinger and thumb in this position, there's no way I can get my right hand to act as a throwing mechanism. If I set my trigger finger and thumb way on top of the ball like so, there's no way I can get my hand to act like a throwing mechanism. So the importance of your right hand is critical for being able to uh, create power, accuracy and leverage. Finally, we have the join of your hands, which is your little pinky finger. You have three options. You can use a 10 finger grip, an interlocking grip, or an overlapping grip, which is known as a Varden grip. So in summary, remember, a neutral grip for powerful, consistent golf shots. Another one in the Mayor's office. Here's a great tip for you slicers out there that are having a hard time getting the ball to go straight. Firstly, make sure you check your grip as this could be a key cause for that club face being open. Make certain that your grip is neutral to slightly strong. Now what I want you to do when you address the ball in your normal position, position your left foot slightly forward and your right foot behind your left foot so that your right toe is opposite your left heel. From this position, take a couple of practice swings, swinging the club back and then trying to feel like the club's going to travel down along the line of your toes as you approach the ball. So we swing back and through. Your image is going to be that you're going to swing along the line of your toes on the downswing and on the through swing. We're trying to feel like the club head is going to continue swinging along the line of your toes. Here we go. Another great way to cure that slice.